outside it's minus six degrees at the moment but inside it's a toasty 20 and i've not had the fire on instead i've been heating the gallery by mining bitcoin and you won't believe how much money i generated by doing it now it's only a few months ago that i tweeted about the possibility of using heat generated through mining cryptocurrency to heat your home in a way to offset your electricity bill but it just so happens that a company has already thought of this and they made this the heat bit this is the heat bit a product designed to heat your home whilst at the same time mine new cryptocurrency this in effect makes it one of the cheapest forms of electric heating available which i'll go into shortly the heat bit takes the idea of a connected home to a completely new level and this is undeniably an absolutely wacky innovation but i think it's got the potential to revolutionize the way we think about heating our homes but does it actually work is it as efficient as regular electric heaters? And just how much money does this actually generate? This episode of Stu's Reviews is sponsored in collaboration with FF News. Okay, so this is perhaps one of the craziest things that I've had out on the channel to date, but I'm already in love with the concept. But before I tell you why, and before I tell you how it works, I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2023. So if you're a lover of gadgets, cryptocurrency, or tech in general, and you find today's episode enjoyable, please make sure you hit that subscribe button at the end. As for the heat bit, it works like this. Silicon chips are used as the heating element inside the heat bit. These chips run the complex calculations required for mining Bitcoin and generate heat as a result, which is then expelled from the device with constant stream of warm air. What's special is that it generates the same amount of heat for the same amount of energy as conventional space heaters, and at the same time, mines you Bitcoin without consuming any extra energy. That's what heat bits say anyway, but is it true? Well, it's been running now in the studio for the past few weeks, and over the past week specifically, it's been minus eight here at the country club. Minus eight. Now, that's the coldest it's been here for a very long time, and I'll tell you one thing. The heat bit has done an incredible job at keeping an even heat throughout the studio, sitting at around 19 to 21 degrees. You can see from this heat map, it's really pushing out that heat at around 36 degrees from the vent in the top. Now up to this point to heat the gallery, which is 30 foot long and seven foot wide, I've been using this 2,500 watt oil radiator and in comparison, the heat bit has actually been able to keep the temperature at a really reasonable level for far less energy. The maximum wattage that this uses whilst producing heat is around 1400 watts, which is a lot less. I think my surprise comes from the fact that I sh probably shouldn't have been using an oil radiator all along to heat such a long room because those radiate heat in a much more localized area instead of circulating it like the heat bit does and therefore it appears much more efficient. It's perhaps not as quick to heat up as an oil radiator because it circulates and amplifies the ambient temperature of each time the air gets pulled through the system, but it does mean that it can hold a much more even and consistent temperature right the way throughout the room because it's circulating that air. But at the time, of writing this review. The Heatbit doesn't have thermostatic control. Now I reached out to Heatbit about this and they said that thermostatic control is coming really, really soon in a software update. But consequently, it does mean at the moment it will just continue to heat and heat and heat the room rather than stop at a desired temperature. Now this is okay in ridiculously cold weather like we've been having at the moment, but the other evening, the outside temperature suddenly jumped about 18 degrees in about four hours, going from minus eight to 10 degrees. In no time at all, the heat bit basically heated the gallery to a tropical temperature of around 27 degrees, at which point I had to turn it off for risk of cooking myself like a bloody turkey. Now, over the runtime that this has been going for, it's used a total of around 111 kilowatts, equating to 35 pounds and 43 pence of electricity at current rates. But how much Bitcoin do you think it's generated in this time? The answer might surprise you. 
three pounds and 15 pence worth of Bitcoin. Now, I know that doesn't seem like a great deal, but hold on just one second, because this works out at nearly 10% of the overall running costs. Think about it. If I used a generic space heater, 100% of my money is going out of the window with the heating. That's 34p per kilowatt of energy, which as space heaters go, works out at around 34p per hour. Now with the heat bit, nearly 10% of that money is flying straight back into my pockets in returns for mining Bitcoin. With this in mind, I'm actually paying nearer 31p per hour for the same energy used, and this saving can soon add up, especially in a world where our electricity prices just keep going up and 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 up. Now, I think it's an absolutely ingenious way of saving money off your heating bill. Now, as a disclaimer here, I'm not a cryptocurrency mining expert in any way, shape, or form. It's pretty much magic to me. But from my limited amount of knowledge of how it actually works, and please, if you know more about this, correct me if I'm wrong, but this percentage of value against its outlay can change quite significantly based on a few different variables within the actual infrastructure of Bitcoin. The more people mining, the more complex computing the heat bit will need to do to generate Bitcoin, meaning that it will need to be ran for much longer before you get the same gains. Likewise, if there's less people mining, then it means that it could generate more in far less time than before. But the heat bit's internal mining software is also part of something called a mining pool, which is something to consider in the overall calculations of value, because the way this works is that it joins a virtual pool of multiple miners across a network to work together to solve complex calculations that generates cryptocurrency much faster. So with this in mind, it's very hard to say an exact figure of value and hard to concretely say exactly how much money that this will generate per hour. Also, another thing to consider is that your holdings may increase in value too. So let's say if Bitcoin increases back to previous highs of 50,000 per coin, then all of my mined Bitcoin will have increased nearly 350%, giving me a much bigger discount on my electricity bill. But then I guess the opposite is also true. Even still, despite being a variable amount, I can actually say that I really, really love the idea behind this product. And the fact that I can generate heat whilst earning money back feels like a cheat code for my electricity bill. There are a few things that I think could be improved slightly. Hardware-wise, I think this thing is pretty much perfect. Perhaps the only thing that I maybe would have been nice would have been an indicator to show which mode I'm in at a quick glance. As it stands, just by looking at it, I don't know whether I'm on 75%, 50%, or 100% heating capacity. To change between these modes, all you do is just press this little button here, but it's not very clear as to what mode I'm in. Prompted me to get my phone out, take a look at the app and see exactly what I'm on to check. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. Thankfully, that's the only thing from a hardware perspective that I'm not so keen on, because it's actually a remarkably well-built product. But from a software perspective, there are a couple of things on my wish list. The first I've already said, and that's that it needs thermostatic control yesterday. Without being able to set desired minimal or maximum temperatures, it will make it very, very difficult to use as the outdoor temperature increases towards the spring, and certainly very difficult in warmer environments to begin with. Now, I know they've said that this is coming, but it needs it desperately. Now, it would also be great to have some form of smart home integration, because right now you can only interact with it through the app, which is okay, but it would be great to get our chosen home assistants to turn it on and off remotely, or even set heating amounts. And lastly, I would love to see how much money I've earned in my local currency, because at the moment it only displays earnings in US dollars, and that's until I withdraw it into a crypto wallet. But again, I've spoken to Heatbit, and these are something that they're fully intending on implementing over the next few months, but they weren't able to give me an accurate timescale on this implementation, which is a bit of a shame. Now, Putting these small software desires to side, I think the biggest issue that the heat bit has is price. 
We've established that already it gives us a variable amount generated, but let's lowball it and say that it gives us around 7% value back on our electricity spend based on my usage figures so far. If that's the case, I would need to run this heater for 24 hours a day for 557 days before I start making on this purchase. Or in real terms, if we're only to run it during the cold weather here in the UK, which is about half the year, it's going to take me three years before I make my money back because the cost of the heat bit is $1,200 or around £980. Realistically, it could actually pay for itself under the current circumstances, but as the price of Bitcoin changes, so too changes the ability of the heat bit to pay for itself. Especially, as I mentioned earlier, the price of Bitcoin increasing back to previous highs, then actually, this could pay for itself in half of that time, potentially even in a single winter here in the UK. And in that case, it makes it definitely worth it. But there's lots of variables, calculations, ifs and buts when it comes to working out the value of the heat bit. But we can unequivocally say two things about it. The first is that without a doubt, it offsets your electricity bill by generating Bitcoin and using the heat from that process to heat your home, taking your electricity down by around 7 to 10% per kilowatt, which is a lot especially at current energy prices. The second is that this is a fantastic concept device and shows something that I think could have a real impact on the future of certain technology and household items in transforming the way we think about using energy. With this, we're generating heat as a byproduct of mining Bitcoin. But are we? Or are we generating Bitcoin as a byproduct of heating our home? That is the question. Sure, the process that's generating the heat is Bitcoin mining, but because it costs me no more energy and no more money, yet gives me the same amount of heat as a regular space heater, is Bitcoin actually the byproduct? Because I would be heating my home anyway, right? Except using the heat bit means that I'm paying less in the long run which could be a while to be fair, or it could be by summer. Who knows? What do you think? Do you think it's Bitcoin as the byproduct or is it heat as the byproduct? Do let me know in the comments below, but I absolutely love this crazy, crazy product. I think it's got some huge potential and I guess we'll see long-term if it pays for itself. If you did enjoy today's episode, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, please do hit that thumbs up because both of those things will really, really help me out. And I'll see you back for another episode of Studio Reviews soon.